Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you this morning. Um, as Teen said, uh, Big Scrub Land Care is, is uh, looked after the remnants. We, we uh, now, under our remnant care program, look after about 50 Big Scrub remnants, uh, and we have been actively helping in the re-establishment of rainforest. And uh, up to date, we've re-established about 600 hectares, which is an amazing figure in relation to the 800 hectare total area of all the remnants. So that, that's been a very successful program. But um, we've always been concerned about the remnants. And uh, early on, when we started getting good information from uh, ecologists, we understood that weeds were the immediate threat but the long-term threat was the lack of genetic diversity in many species. And the reason for that is that the remnants might contain 100 species, but the key individuals, the threatened species, and the key structural species, particularly those that make up the canopy, there might be only four or five individuals. And that, that uh, does not uh, provide enough genetic diversity for these to be sustainable in the long run. So the, 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 uh, the pessimists when we started 25 years ago said, you guys are wasting your time because in the end, these things will collapse. The remnants will disappear because there's no genetic diversity. So we eventually were able to, with the help of Maurizio <coughs> Rosetto, who is the chief scientist and a great geneticist at the Royal Botanic Garden, Sydney. We spoke to him about the problem of, of uh, this lack of genetic diversity a, in the remnants, and B, in the seed that uh, seed collectors uh, gather for the nurseries to propagate into planting stock. And there have been about two and a half million trees planted in the Big Scrub region. And uh, unfortunately, they lack the genetic diversity because the seed collectors, in spite of uh, the best efforts of the nursery people, would only collect from a very small number of trees and they would repeat going back to those easy, easily accessible trees year after year. Uh, a little research was done and that confirmed that the planting stock did lack enough genetic diversity. So we then, in, in collaboration with uh, Maurizio Rosetto at the, big, at the Royal Botanic Gardens, came up with a program uh, whereby we, he said, look, why don't we apply the best science, best genetic science to what you guys are trying to do? So what we agreed to do was to originally look at about uh, 25 species and look at their genetic diversity across the whole of their range, which involved uh, collecting leaf samples uh, from about uh, 200 individual trees across the range. And uh, <coughs> so we set up to do that, but the, this was an enormous task because the range of some species goes from the Sydney basin up to the wet tropics whereas others, and particularly some of the threatened species, have a, a very narrow range from around Grafton up to, the, uh, up to about Maryborough. So we uh, recruited Rob Coleman as part of the group. And Rob, as many of you know, is probably the, uh, the most experienced uh, field ecologist uh, specialising in rainforest in Australia. So we embarked about three years ago on the, uh, the leaf sample collection. We were hindered by the pandemic restrictions, so that's taken longer than we expected. But uh, also, <clears throat> we've expanded the program now to 60 species, uh, and that's comprised uh, 30 key structural species and 30 threatened species. So we're, we're now uh, embarked on that stage of the program. By the end of this quarter in March, we are planning on having all of the, uh, the leaf uh, samples collected for eight threatened species and for uh, the, 25, the uh, 25 key structural species. So the, they, those uh, DNA samples, uh, sorry, the, the leaf samples are then sent to a contractor in Canberra who does the DNA sequencing for each individual leaf sample. That data is then picked up by the Royal Botanic Gun, and they <coughs> do a, a genome analysis looking at the variation 
across the range of each species, and they relate that to a large number of ecological variables, and they feed into that a climate change model. So the output of their genome analysis is uh, the identity of, of up to 20 populations or individual species, and those 20 <coughs> populations or species will provide us with the optimal genetic diversity to deal with climate change, uh, new insects, and new diseases. So we then <coughs> go back and identify each of those populations or individual species, and we collect cuttings, or if we've found that that species doesn't lend itself to propagation from cuttings, we will collect seed or even juveniles. So we, uh, <coughs> we then grow those cuttings on, uh, those propagules on in a nursery, and that provides the planting stock for 20, up to 20 individuals of each of the initially 25 and now 60 species. So we will, uh, <coughs> we will have collected leaf samples from 12,000 species by the time we get to the, the completion of the sample collection, which we hope to do within uh, the next probably 18 months. So the, uh, we're setting up uh, probably three seed plantations where we will uh, establish um, the 20 individuals of each species that collectively have optimal genetic diversity. And it'll be like a, a big multi-species macadamia plantation. But this in itself presents major challenges because it's never been done before. After 40 years, the planting models in macadamia is continuing to change. So we, we face a huge problem in saying, okay, what, what is the optimal layout to produce, to get maximum seed production? So when, when the going, that will obviously take probably five or six or seven years for the species to start, for the, the trees in the plantation of each species to start flowering and seeding. So the, the next stage is for those seeds to be harvested, uh, grown on and Mark Dumphy's firewall nursery is, is one of our partners and he's doing this. So then <coughs> that planting stock will be then made available to other nurseries, to uh, the bush generators around here who specialize in planting. And, and this is a huge industry now here, as I mentioned, uh, there's two and a half million trees being planted in the last uh, 25 years. And this year, the expectation is that 250,000 trees will be planted. And that is a colossal number. And uh, it, will, it will regenerate somewhere between 60 and 80 hectares. So if you think of that in terms of the total area of the big scrub remnants, which is 800, the rate of expansion of the habitat is just amazing. So what we hope to do then is to get interest all the local bushy generators who are the planting contractors to uh, utilize the seed and we'll probably subsidize that, oh, sorry, utilize the planting stock that Mark produces and use that in the extensive plantings that they're uh, doing. So the, the other thing we will do is as soon as we've uh, <coughs> got the proper gules from uh, the, the 60 species, we will set up a demonstration site where we will <coughs> use the 20 key, uh, the 30 key structural species uh, to form the nucleus of a, uh, a restoration planting for lowland and endangered rainforest. Uh, and that will be, those key structural species, of course, will be accompanied by the usual range of, of uh, pioneers and secondary species. So that, that will give us uh, a genetically ideal as far as we can get it. Uh, restoration planting for, for the endangered lowland rainforest. But within that, and that's, that will provide a perfect habitat for the recovery of threatened species. So what we plan to do then is incorporate within that <coughs> ecological, sorry, the ecosystem restoration planting, discrete populations of 30 uh, threatened species, and those threatened species, again, will have the best, the optimal genetic diversity to ensure their, their uh, <coughs> resilience to climate change, insects, and new diseases. So instead of just doing haphazard translation 
<coughs> translocation plantings, uh, which is happening now, this will give us a comprehensive model uh, for uh, A, the most viable in the long term, genetically viable ecosystem recovery planting, and also the ideal habitat for the recovery plantings of the 30 threatened species. So that, in a nutshell, is what we're doing. This is, this is leading world practice in ecological restoration. Nobody has done this. And uh, it's wonderful that uh, the community group, plus our partners, Royal Botanic Gardens, Firewall Nursery, and Rob Coyman, can uh, organize this, get the science done, finance it, and bring it to fruition. So uh, I hope every bush generator here will be interested in this story because it is the way forward. Thank you.